All right, thanks, Amber. We are back inside the Blue Zone, and we are set up first and Joel. Great things happen. Joel Erickson from the Indy Star. It's just week four, but can you believe how big and hyped up this game is with the division champs, Tennessee? I can. It's because I was at the owners' meetings in Florida when Tim Irsay was talking about this. He was very, very upbeat and vibrant about what he wants from this. He said he went really hard at the coaches last year, used some profanity. He, after they lost the first meeting, it matters a lot to him because the Titans have won the division the last two years. This looks like it might be a different Titans team. They've struggled a bit. It might, the, the competition for the division might be Jacksonville. But this early in the season at home, this is as big as a game can feel like it gets based on what's happened in the past. When they first started the AFC South back in like 2002, it was just the Colts division. Hang a banner. They haven't won one since 2014. Every other team has claimed that division crown, and yet Jim Irsay adamant about getting on track, and it starts here today. Yeah, it's one of those things, last year early, the Colts lost the game at Tennessee, and it put cushion between the two teams that the Colts never could catch up. They never closed that gap, even when they were on their winning streak late in the season. The Colts have a chance to do that to the Titans today. And they're one and two, the Colts are one, one and one. You, you get the win here, put them at one and three. The Titans are in chase mode, and we saw last year how important that can be going forward. You never want to be the worst in anything in the NFL, in particular scoring, just 40 points through three games. Is that just what this team is, or can they do better and score more points here today? Well, it comes down to the offensive line. The offensive line, if you look at it, it's, it's kind of like the skeleton of the offense. Without it, there's no form to it. That's what we've seen through the first three weeks is they can't get anything going with the offensive line. If they start getting the offensive line to play the way that they were supposed to, then, then this offense can start to look like what it's supposed to. But until that happens, there's no way to get any of these guys on track. As bad as things have been, you're still 1-1-1. One, one, one. You could easily be 0-3. You had the turnover in the great fourth quarter down in Houston. You got that drive prolonged last week after the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. So I really feel like this is a, a, a reboot for the Colts. They need to take full advantage. Well, this is sort of the time of year that when they've had slow starts in the past that they start to get going. You know, especially last year they were 0-3 at this point. They beat Miami. They kind of start to figure some stuff out at this point. I wonder if we're going to see some changes on the offensive line, possibly. Some changes in what they do based on what they've learned the first couple of weeks. Being at 1-1-1 one, one, one gives them a chance to not play catch up so much, but kind of go. We saw some of these young receivers step up. Alec Pierce, uh, Jelani with the two touchdowns. Uh, that's a good thing, but the bad thing is now the rest of the league is aware you got to start game planning for their guys. I'm excited to see what they do now that they're on the map somewhat. Yeah, I think the big thing is what they can add to this offense, specifically down the field. That catch that Pierce made down the field last week, defenses, like you just said, they have to plan for that. Well, that opens stuff for Michael Pittman, that opens stuff for Nike Mines. The same thing with Jelani Woods. We saw him in the red zone make catches, but there were some routes that he was open in that 15 to 20 yard range that they've struggled so far. You start getting those, it takes, it pushes a defense back, and it allows a lot of more easy throws, quick throws for Matt Ryan, so he's not getting hit by pass rushers. You can't really judge a QB that has no time to pass, but what do you make of Matt Ryan thus far? So far, it's kind of been a mixed bag. You've, you've seen the accuracy, you've seen, especially in the fourth quarter coming back, but he's got to protect the ball better. Seven fumbles so far. Uh, he's struggled with some of the, it's hard to tell if it's him or if it's Ryan Kelly who's struggling with the blitz identification, but that's been good. Now that stuff has to be better. Let's get to your keys to the game. First and Joel, what do you have to make in the Titans? Well, the number one key is what we were just talking about. They have to pick up the blitz. The Titans like to blitz the quarterback. This is something the Colts have struggled with. They have to be better at identification and can't allow so many free rushes. Number two key, they got to beat up Derrick Henry. This has not been the Derrick Henry that most people are used to through the first three weeks. He's averaging just 3.6 yards per carry. He's really struggled. Their offensive line is banged up. Led by Grover Stewart, who's played a phenomenal. They have to be better and, and take that away from them. And then the last key is just they have to unleash it Yannick and Gakwe. I just mentioned the Titans offensive line. They lost left tackle Taylor Luan. Their backup is Dennis Bailey. It feels like a matchup that Ngakwe should win, and it might matter because DeForest Buckner is hurt coming into this game. Ngakwe should win that, and that takes away the passing game, downfield passing game the Titans want to do. Some things to be watching for today, thanks to Joel Erickson from the Indy Star. Let's hit a break. We're back more inside the Blue Zone.